You may recognize Ken Baker as the senior correspondent on E! News, but before his life as a TV journalist, he penned a real-life tale about a pituitary gland that caused him decades' worth of sexual confusion. Now his story has been turned into a movie called Late Bloomer. Ken joins us via Skype. Welcome, Ken. Hey, thanks for having me, Dana. You're very welcome. Now, you considered yourself asexual for years until a doctor <laughs> diagnosed you with a pituitary gland disorder in your late 20s. You're laughing right now, but that must have been really dramatic. I wouldn't say, because, you know, I wouldn't, I actually, I'm not saying you're wrong, like your notes are wrong, but I, I think I've sort of evolved on the topic. Like, I wouldn't say I was asexual. Okay. I was just confused sexual. Like, I was kind of disabled sexual, um, always heterosexual, uh, always attracted to women. I mean, I had girlfriends uh, through high school and stuff like that. But as I got older, the tumor got bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time I was in my mid-20s, I had virtually no testosterone in my body. I was infused with a female hormone called prolactin. The level of prolactin in my body was 1,578. That means nothing to you, but by comparison, right. it should be like five. So it's 1,578. And by the way, it's the, it's the hormone that women secrete, uh, secrete to produce breast milk. Wow. And um, they have about a level of 100, 150. So I had like almost 1,600. So I was pretty much a disaster and was struggling with it and was undiagnosed. And I blame that on myself for not going to the doctor mm. and letting it get as bad as it got. And so in a lot of ways, the story is a lesson in just really um, being, you know, honest with yourself and being open and not letting your fears control you to the point where you don't go to a doctor. And uh, there's a lot of other messages in, in the story yeah, as well. Yeah, well, why didn't you go to the doctor? Were you afraid that you were dying? Were you afraid that they were going to tell you that, you know, what was the fear based on? I think, like, for me, honestly, I didn't, because the tumor had been growing so slowly over such a long period of time. I got diagnosed with it when I was 27, mm -hmm. but the doctors, when they diagnosed it, and it was about, you know, this big and, like, right behind my eyes at the mm -hmm. base of my front of my brain, and uh, I just thought I had really bad sinus headaches. Um, and as far as the lack of sex drive and stuff, I just kind of chalked it up to, well, I'm a head case. Mm -hmm. um, but... I was wrong. I actually had a disease. It's mm -hmm. called hyperprolactinemia. My pituitary gland was overproducing prolactin, and a tumor was growing as a result of it, and with some abnormal cell tissue. And uh, so, it was, honestly, you see in the movie. Actually, mm -hmm. it's a very real scene that I experienced, which was when the doctor told me I had a brain tumor. It's usually what someone would like the worst case scenario they could hear, but for me, it was actually the best news because I had an answer. Mm -hmm. and and I wasn't ashamed because a lot of it, you know, a lot of the symptoms were, you know, oh. just sexual problems and dysfunction and, you know, and just feeling embarrassed about right. it. And I didn't really want to talk about it. I mean, I was in my 20s and I didn't want to deal with it. Yeah, and, and as a man, so, yeah, that's, that's hits home. And, and what's interesting, when they finally did diagnose you with it, you went through puberty as an adult male. How did your view of the world change? Because in the trailer that I saw, it was almost like women, 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 whoa. <laughs> Yeah, um, I wish I could say I handled it with the grace and elegance of a, of a gentleman pushing 30, uh, but I handled it with the uh, inelegance of a 14-year-old. Uh, but uh, luckily, that was a very brief time in my life, and and because you know I had really been um, that just let's be honest, I was like really lonely, and I Aww. just felt somehow less of a man and I just focused on work and and it was it was sad Diana it was a really sad scene and um, so when I got healthy I honestly had this feeling I remembered seeing this movie Awakenings mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you remember this with Robin Williams and and he he plays a doctor Oliver Sacks and he puts this uh, he finds this drug I think it's called L-Dopa or something along those lines and and he finds that these patients who are in these stupors for years, that they had some sort of dementia, all of a sudden came out of it, but then it wore off. Mm. And they didn't know why, and it just wore off. And I literally felt like for the first, you know, year or half, you know, six months that I was going to be sick again. So I had wow. to enjoy my body while I had it, and I was just 
being ridiculous. And yeah, I actually went through a puberty like experience. I had acne. I, my sex drive was out of control. Yeah, voice um, too. You know, and I actually got stronger. I got muscle and I started playing hockey again because huh. I'd been a competitive ice hockey player in college. So it, it was more good than bad, but I definitely learned really quickly that I was made male. Uh, by having the surgery, but I didn't really learn how to become a man until I learned hmm. how to harness that maleness. And that's a big message that comes across in the movie and my book, that there's a difference between maleness, which mm -hmm. is just the shell of a, of a person, mm -hmm. and manhood, which is more of your soul. And I think yeah. that's what separates human beings from, you know, llamas. So, um, <laughs> That's an important message, too. And why, why did yeah. you decide to share your story, not only in book form, but now on screen? Well, <laughs> this movie's been in development pretty much ever since the book came out. Mm -hmm. the, the book has been re reissued, relaunched with uh, a new chapter and some new stuff uh, with the movie on the cover. And, uh, but it was written in 2001. It came out and published in 2001. It got some attention back in the day. And uh, it was optioned like by four different producers, to be honest with you, at some point or another. And it just looked like it would never get made. And then when last summer I got a phone call saying, hey, we're going to make it. And J.K. Simmons is going to be in it, Oscar winner. Yeah. <laughs> and Jane Lynch and Kevin Pollack is directing and all these great actors. I was like, wow. So Penguin, uh, my publisher, found out about it. And they're like, we're putting this book back out. So then I had to deal with the fact like, wow, shoot, I got to talk about all this stuff. I have kids now. <laughs> like, I wrote this book. I was like. I didn't have kids. I didn't have, you know, so I really but what had to have, have been that. some of the reactions, Ken, now that, now that the story's coming out again and the movie's coming out? I think surprise, because people, I mean, I mean, my friends, obviously, all mm -hmm. know the story and everything in my family, but, uh, but just more people watch E! News or, you know, see me on TV over the years or whatever, they, they were just like, oh my gosh, I had no idea, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they shouldn't have any idea, really, because <laughs> it was a long time ago that I had first talked about it, and uh, now it's kind of coming out with the movie and everything. So um, the reaction is kind of people are surprised. And, yeah. and honestly, I'm not really – look, it, there's no shame to my game. I went through a really horrific experience, but it had a happy ending. And I think there's a lot of lessons for people to learn in it. And, um, you know, the movie, it's a great date movie because it's mm -hmm. really about – learning how to negotiate and navigate romantic relationships uh, when you have all these other kind of physical hormonal forces working. And isn't that the struggle that men and women face to try to match the, all that up? And so it's just True. a really heightened, it's just a really heightened state of that because of the immensely mm -hmm. intense and acute experience I was going through, going wow. through like this puberty kind of thing. Well, it's an incredible story and a fun one to watch, too. Let's not forget that you do infuse a lot of humor into what is a really difficult situation in your life. And you have a beautiful family now. Congratulations, Ken. Thank you. I hope, uh, hope everyone enjoys the movie. And, and by the way, laughter is the best form of medicine. So right. the fact that people are laughing and I can laugh with them, it just makes it all seem just cosmically perfect. Yes. It's funny therapy. For more on Ken Baker, follow him on Twitter at Ken Baker Now. His film Late Bloomer will be released on October 7th. I'm Diana Falzone for Fox 411.